Well, hello everybody. It's Ronnie with Whip and Chain. I work with Maggie and Lauren to bring you beautiful crochet tutorials. Today I want to talk to you about the beginnings of learning the gingham stitch. And this is a fun little project you can do to try to see if you can understand the stitch. It's really not that hard. It's more of just watching what you're doing. It's a very easy stitch. The whole pattern, this one in particular, is done in single crochet. I'm trying to work on the edges. My edging needs a little more perfection, but I'm really still totally pleased on how this came out. I'm going to use this as a dishcloth, but these are also, they could be used as um, pot holders. They do have to be made out of 100% cotton. If you're going to use anything in the kitchen, I do strongly recommend only using cotton because all the other different types could melt, they could burn, they could catch fire. There's just so many bad things that can happen. So just please try to stick to cotton yarn for any kitchen items that you will be using. If they're decorative, I guess that's a different story, but please stick with cotton. But anyway, so for the gingham, there's a couple things I want to go over first. For this, the recommendations are using two different shades of a color that you want. As you can see in this one, I used greens. But you don't have to stick with the same two shades. You can go with white, black, and red. You could go with um, a peach and maybe a black and white. You can do whatever you want. But surprise surprise we start with the white in this particular pattern but the white is not the constant color the second color you draw into this pattern is your constant color as you can see what is the same color in every single row my light green that is always the second color you incorporate so when you choose your second color Make sure it's a color that you're comfortable being in the whole pattern. That is one thing I want to say. Now, I've seen this done in um, in double crochet and half double crochet. The double crochet, you can see so much of your stitching. You have to carry your yarn. And even though you can see it in the single crochet, it works. But when you do it in a double crochet, I feel it takes away from your project. But it's something to dabble around in. And hook size is also going to be your determination. If you are a very tight crocheter for normally, I would actually recommend going up at least a half a size in your crochet hook that you would normally use, maybe even a full size. But if you're a very loose crocheter, you might want to take it down a half a, like a half, eh, yeah, not a whole size, a half a size. But it's something you're going to have to dabble around because if you crochet way too tight, you're going to see everything you're carrying very clearly. But if you're too loose, you're going to have the same problem. See, if you really look hard, you can see where I'm carrying the yarn. But you really have to look, and I really, I got a little red string in here. You really have to, have to look for it. The edging, I just sporadically did a single crochet and three in the uh, corners. I don't know if this is my favorite go-to border for this, but the project itself is absolutely beautiful. Um, I like how the gingham stitch works, and there's a trick to the pattern where you don't have to keep moving your yarn around because it's getting twisted and knotted. So I want to show you how to do that too. But let's just dive into it. I'm going to show you with a, a size six hook. I usually try to go a little larger, hoping that you can see my stitches better. And I do want to show you that this project does, it's a like six and a half, almost seven by seven and a half maybe. And how many rows you want to do is totally up to you. How many row, how long you want to make it. You can make this, you can use regular acrylic yarn and make it a blanket. 
you can do whatever you want with this. Once you have the basics down in this, you got it. Okay, it's really not that bad. So, just for transparency, I had a client of mine um, give me so much yarn. And I still have some yarn here for Maggie if she's listening to the video. Anyway, um, I'm using all cotton, but this one's peaches and cream. And this one's forest green. Then this is another gift. This is Cotton Premier Home. And this one is called Sage. And this one was just in a ball, so it's like a cream color. All right. Now, to understand gingham, if I'm saying it right, if I'm not, you guys can pick on me later. It's done in stitches of fives, multiples of fives, but there's a big but to it. You cannot end on an even number. For example, five, that's not even, but 10 is. 15, you can stop at 15. You can do 15, but you can't do 20. You can do 25, but you can't do 30. Anything that ends in an even number will not work because you need to start and end in your same colors, and that is why. So this pattern, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I did 25, so you pick your multiple. Just make sure it's not an even multiple. After you get your multiple, just add one, okay? So to repeat that, these are done in multiples of fives, but not on landing on any even number. So it's almost like 5, 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, like that. And then you add one to it. Okay. So I am going to do just a small sample. So we start with our traditional slip knot. And I'm going to do, um, th th my pattern here is 25, but I'm going to do 15. So, so I'm just doing a sample. Um, actually, maybe I'll do 25 just so I can show you a few times. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. So once you've got your number that you want, add one. And one. So we're going to turn it over and we're using the back loops. So from the second chain from the hook, one, two, remove. I want you to put in a single crochet. Sometimes it's just so hard to get started for me. So, and that's one, and we're going to do four more, two, three, four, and with your fifth, put it in, but don't pull it through, but do not finish that stitch. And I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here, right off the camera, that apparently another person in our group does. 
which I thought I was the only oddball out. But, you know, when you have a system that works for you, I strongly recommend that you do it. It doesn't matter how it seems. It matters what works for you. So I am taking five stitch markers right here, okay? So now, now's the time to pick your constant color. For this one, my constant color, this time around, for this sample, I am going to use dark green, okay? So, you got your two loops on your hook. You take your white yarn, and this is really important to follow. You take your white yarn, or whatever color you're starting your base with, you pull it in front of your crocheting, okay? Make sure that stays in front. Then you take your constant color and you just loop it over your hook. Okay? And then you finish your single crochet. Now that, you let your end fall down. Do not carry your end. Okay? Now you go in your next loop and you make five more single crochets, but make sure while you're doing it, you're carrying your white. Carry your white with you. So that's one. Two. Three, four, and now this is your fifth stitch. You grab your your second color, you pull through. Now, before you finish it, you drop this is the yarn that stays. That yarn will always be dropped in the back. Your constant yarn stays in the back, okay? And then you wrap and you bring up your white or whatever color you're using. So now we do five more. And you carry your constant color with you. So the your constant color is coming along for the ride. So that's one. Two, three, four. Now we're going into our fifth. You remember what we do? There's your two. Now, because we're done with the white, you take your white and you bring it over top of that yarn. Don't be afraid. And you just pull it down in front. Okay? Pull it down. Now you wrap over and get your green going. Then you bring your con your your white yarn down, and we do five more. So, so that's one, two.
three. four, and five. So your constant color falls to the back, and you wrap, and you moved over to the white. So five single crochets. That's one, Three, four, So you see, I did one row. So I'm taking one of my stitch markers and I'm placing it up there. Now, your constant color, you might want to just tug on it just to make sure there's no bumps in there. But that's row one done. Okay. So now, you chain one and you flip it. Flip it right around. Okay, now we're going to continue. So, bringing our constant color with us, do five single crochets. One, two, three, four, your fifth stitch pull it in grab your white pull it up now this is your changeable yarn pull up in front and pull over right over that yarn okay and wrap and go through by doing this your yarn never gets twisted ever and your pattern works out really well. All right. So then you bring your, your yarn back down. Now we can do five. This is one, two, three. Four. Now this is our constant color. Remember that stays in the back. You wrap over and you finish your fifth stitch. Now we do our white or whatever color you picked. One, two, three. Four, and five. And remember, your white comes down in front. Wrap and go through. You bring it back and you do your five of your constant color. One, two, Three, four, you drop the constant in the back and you wrap and go through. Now let's go to the end. These ends will get weaved in, no worries. Just don't carry them with you. 
it's one. Two. Three. Four. And five. So my next row is done. That's row two. Chain one and you turn. Now bring your concert color along with you while you do your first five. One, two, three, four, and watch what I'm doing. Bring them down. Oops, not quite yet. Didn't even start my fifth one. Shame on me. There we go. Now bring it down. And wrap. I'm doing these rows multiple times on the video. So you do not have to keep rewinding like so many other people do. I want to be able to help you where you're not so frustrated with learning something new. All right, Mo. I got my Mima behind me. He was starting to snore. Anyway, so. Mima, you okay? Oh, he's just tired. I apologize. Now, I'm going to go in there for my fifth one. You drop your con... I, that's what helps me, calling it the constant. Then I wrap it and go through. Now I'm going to do the white. One. Two. Three, four, and Three, four, and notice I dropped that in the back. Five. One. So what I'm doing with these, this tells me how many rows I did. There's my third one that I'm putting up there. These are all done in multiples of five rows, okay? So chain one. Now I'm going to be quiet and do row four, let you watch without talking, talking, talking.
Okay, that is row four. I'm sure you guys got it from here, but I am going to follow through and do the fifth row with you just so you got it because it can be frustrating when you're not sure what you're doing. So here we go. And what's one more row? Hmm? Now, so you can see the green going through there, but the trick is when the whole project's done, you really can't see it. And look, I forgot to carry. See, this is what happens when you don't carry a yarn properly. And I didn't do that on purpose, not at all. But when you do that, it can it can really really mess up your project so what I do advise you take your time because that all that hard work will go down the drain at least it's the way I am that would drive me insane. That really would. Knowing me and knowing how I like things, I just wouldn't be able to be okay with that. So it's probably a really good idea to periodically go back and just flip your project over side to side, look at it, make sure everything is the way you want it. white. By doing that with the white, your yarn does not get twisted. I promise you it is a lifesaver. Okay, I'm going to meet you at the end. I'll see you there in a moment. Okay, now I'm finishing up my last square so when you start your last your fifth stitch you pull through but do not finish it now remember how I've been repeating okay at the end you're gonna cut your non-constant yarn okay and what we're gonna take before we add our next one on Now you're constantly going to chain one and turn. Okay. And then you're going to put in your five single crochets. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to add in the new one. We cut off the white. Just like that. And then you're done to your next patch of uh, your new color they added. So that's one. It's two. Why am I getting double on here? Remember not to drag your 
details with you, okay? Like I just did. One, two, three, four, and bring it up. And remember, it's your non-constant that comes to the front. And then, voila your next color. So then we do five squares of this. One, two, three, four, and here. Constant gets dropped and your new one comes up. Five. And just remember to always bring along your yarn covered in the back. Two. Three. Four. And wrap. One, two, three, four, and five. Chain one and turn your work. We did one row, so I'm taking my stitch marker and putting it up there, then I know I did one row. Believe it or not, that does work, guys. And then if you stop in the middle of your project, the ones that you got done, you can just attach right to your project. So you know what row you were on. Isn't that cool? Two. Three. Four. And which one do we put in front? Are non constant, right? So our constant stays in the back. There. And then it's five more. Two. Three. Four. And. Okay, now, so what you'll do is when you get your five rows of these done, then you switch back to this pattern, then you switch to this pattern, and then you keep going until you got the size that you want, and that's all that's to it. Now, if you want to do the border that I did, the very basic border, it's single crochet. I did it two times around and the corners are three single crochets in the corners. And then you weave in your ends. And that is how you do the beginning gingham stitching. All right, if you guys like this, um, learning this pattern, I can do another one on a different stitch. So please leave your notes down into the comments. This video might be a little cutty at one spot because I messed up and I had a cut. So if you notice a little gap, I do apologize for that. But if you like our videos, can you please hit that like button at the bottom and hit that subscribe button? We would greatly appreciate it. Again, my name is Ronnie. I work alongside Maggie and Lauren to bring you crochet tutorials. Until next time, have a wonderful night. Bye, everybody.